All right, guys, welcome to Isaiah 23. And if you didn't see the community tab post, um, uh, Stanley had uh, notified me in a comment that I didn't do evening devotional. I am so thankful that he reminded me of that because until I read his comment, I did not realize I hadn't even filmed it and posted it. Um, we got so busy and I was so hurting and tied up that it, I went right past it. Didn't even didn't even dawn on me that I needed to do it or that I hadn't done it until he said something. So what I did is I filmed yesterday's evening devotion and tonight's evening devotion together because they actually go together, surprisingly. So that video will be uh, uploaded at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, my time. And um, you'll be able to listen to both of them back to back. Uh, and they actually are really good. And it should be actually real encouragement for everybody uh, to hear those. So that you'll be able to, you won't be able, you won't miss last night's. I'm just, I put them together because to, I want to keep the continuity going. So you can look at the community tab post or you can just wait for that tonight, but it will be uploaded tonight. And I'm not going to do that again. I will make sure I don't make that mistake again because you guys deserve better than that. And I owe you better than that as somebody who is doing this. I should not miss that, uh, miss those videos that I say I'm going to do. So that's my promise to you guys. Now, let's get right into Isaiah 23. Proclamation against Tyre. Now on the eSword uh, computer app, it says Proclamation against Tyre and Sidon. Now I'm sure Sidon is going to, well, Sidon is mentioned in verse 4. Something interesting in the very first verse here. Watch this. The burden against Tyre. Wail, you ships of Tarshish. Where else do we see mention the ships of Tarshish? Is that not mentioned in the book of Revelation? I think it is. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste, so that there is no house, no harbor from the land of Cyprus. It is revealed to them. See, as far as I know, Tyre and Sidon are north of Jerusalem. What is this referring to? Is this referring to that particular uh, uh, thing declared against the Mystery of Babylon? Because you remember, Mystery of Babylon talks about the same exact thing. Verse 2, Be still, you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whom those who cross the sea have filled. And on great waters, the grain of Shehor, the harvest of the river, is her revenue. She is a marketplace for the nations. Interesting. You know who ships all over the world? Most of their, well, almost all of their products, they ship everywhere. Israel. Planes leave every day loaded with fresh flowers. Multiple times a day, all around the world. Kind of interesting. They sell all kinds of other stuff, too. In fact, there's some things you can only get there. Verse 4, be ashamed, O Sidon, for the sea has spoken. The strength of the sea saying, I do not labor, nor bring forth children, neither do I rear young men, nor bring up virgins. When the report reaches Egypt, they also will be in agony at the report of Tyre. Cross over to Tarshish, wail, you inhabitants of the coastland. This is very interesting to me, because some this really sounds like what the book of Revelation is talking about as it refers to Mr. Avalon. Verse 7, is this your joyous city? Whose antiquity is from ancient days, whose feet carried her far off to dwell? Who has taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowning city, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth? The Lord of hosts has purposed it to bring to dishonor the pride of all glory, to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. Overflow through your, or sorry, overflow through your land like the river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more strength. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord has given a commandment against Canaan to destroy its strongholds. And he said, You will rejoice no more, O you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon. Arise, cross over to Cyprus. There also you will have no rest. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans. This people which was not. Assyria founded it for wild beasts of the desert. They set up its towers. They raised up its palaces and brought it to ruin. This people which was not. Hmm. 
Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. Now it shall come to pass in that day the tower will be forgotten seventy years, according to the days of one king. At the end of the seventy years it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the harlot. Hmm, there's so much wording here. Hints, in my view, hints, leading back to the book of Revelation. Verse 16, take a harp, go about the city, you forgotten harlot. Make sweet melodies, sing many songs that you may be remembered. And it shall be at the end of the seventy years that the Lord will deal with Tyre. She will return to her hire and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Her gain and her pay will be set apart for the Lord. They will not be treasured nor laid up. For her gain will be for those who dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for fine clothing. Wow. To me, this is talking about Mystery Babylon. Just the hints that are in here. A lot of the wording and the referencing being used seems to link to that. Now, could this have been back during the 70-year uh, isolation in Babylon? Absolutely. A lot of it seems to, seems to, to be uh, pointing to that. But man, there's a lot of this that points directly to the book of Revelation and what it says is going to happen during that time frame. So that's what I told you guys is that there's you read Isaiah, it's like, is this talking about the book of Revelation? Because it really seems like it's referencing that. Or the book of Revelation is referencing Isaiah. And it would not be outside the realm of possibility that the Lord would quote that stuff to John. And he would reference the book of Isaiah to John, possibly to help him understand what he was seeing. He could he could link back to the Isaiah and go, oh wait, there's more there. Now whether he had the ability to do that or not, I don't know, but we have these books now and can compare them side by side. That's amazing. And a lot of the people mentioned here are also mentioned in those same accounts in the book of Revelation. That's a, incredible to me. Again, guys, we can't cover everything that this has. I need to have my laptop right now. They're, they got the living room tied up. And um, I need to have my laptop to open this stuff up and look a little closer. But I think if we did, and it would, it would be a couple of hours to cover everything in this one chapter... We would see a whole lot of links to these things as far as the wording goes in the Bible. And it would just solidify what we already know. That time is going to be the most horrible time this earth has ever seen or ever will see. Period. End of discussion. The Lord is true in what he says. This is going to be bad. You don't want to be here. But the fact that we can find all these really intimate details about that time. People being named. Nations being called out. And the events surrounding what's going to happen to them. And there's a lot of this that's 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 capitalized in here, which causes you to want to pay attention. Like verse 3, and on great waters, the grain of Shehor, the harvest of the river. Why is that capitalized? The harvest of the river is her revenue. And she is a marketplace for the nations. That's interesting. Like I said, it, it, it would take a lifetime of study. I can't possibly cover it in a single video. There's a lot here. But the more I read this, the more it's pointing me to the book of Revelation. And it, it it's, it's referencing all over the Bible. So, yeah. Maybe a reason why Isaiah is in the middle of the book. Because, and it has 66 chapters. Because it ties to everything else in the Bible. It's the center. Very, very, very good stuff. Tomorrow will be Isaiah 24, impending judgment on the earth. Obviously, obviously this is Revelation talk. Obviously. And that should be a really good video tomorrow. So uh, more more pointing to what I, I already see personally. This is all going right to the book of Revelation. It's all going right to the tribulation. Now, again, events, some of these aspects happened over history, but this seems to be focused on that time frame, and that even more causes me to look at Isaiah 23 and go, is that talking about Mystery Babylon? It sounds like it is, because a lot of the wording used here is just what's used in the book of Revelation towards Mystery Babylon. So, that'll be something good for you to go and do some studying on, and I have, uh, I believe I've got all those now, those uh, videos about Mystery Babylon, even that really, really long one. That we covered like five, six hundred scriptures, um, all in a playlist now, and you can go and you can reference right to them and, and rewatch them or reference out of them to look this stuff up if you want to. All right, guys, that was Isaiah twenty-three. Thank you for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one.